We're here today with Jason Glover, designer of Four Tribes, Dig Down Dwarf, and the upcoming game, Stew. Welcome to Design Diary, the podcast where you get to look inside my board game design notebook as well as what's going on inside my head. We look at a new word each day from the sense of mechanics, tone, theme, or inspiration for a full game. Today's word is... Insaturation. Restoration after decay, lapse, or dilapidation. An act of instituting or establishing something. And we have Jason Glover here, also known as Grey Gnome Games, to talk about insaturation. What do you got? Very excited. Very excited about (laughs) this. I'm excited. We've never chatted. (laughs) I know. I've followed you for a long time. Absolutely. Um, Yeah. Um, So first... The first thing I want to say is this was a a completely different process than I'm used to for, you know, coming up with a design. Obviously, most people don't just pull a book, I mean, a word out of a dictionary. (laughs) So for me, I had to work um, sort of backwards because you normally I I feel like I normally start with mechanics. So this sort of forced me, I felt like to start with some sort of a theme. So I couldn't really. And I've, I've heard some of your, your previous shows, and it seems like you're very easily can start taking that word and turning it into a mechanic. Or for me, I was looking at the different parts of the word, um, and, and things that jumped out at me were uh, decay and dilapidation and things like that. And um, I went to a theme right away. I started just visually picturing things. And the first sort of um, theme that came up was sort of um, disturbing, and that would be like, decay of like a human corpse or some sort of you know death of some sort and then that death being brought back to life you know some way so i I started i started there with that and i thought well i don't know that's kind of a not really a great theme for a downer (laughs) yeah kind of a downer a little bit sad so i went to um sort of like a a forest i started thinking of like a forest that might have been like an enchanted forest at one point in time a really you know beautiful forest and that some evil spell fell upon it and then it was just went to waste and just you know it was full of you know you know death or whatnot and then the point of the game would be to sort of revitalize uh, maybe your druids or some sort of you know mythical type of um persona and you're trying to um bring this uh forest back to what it, what it used to be rejuvenize it Cool. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of where I started. So as you but, say that, I picture your artwork. Like I can really visualize the artwork that you would make for that for that yeah, image. Yeah, like, like dark. And, and, and actually, when I was listening to some of your, your previous podcast, that you had uh, an idea for a game with uh, the mountain um, where they were trying to scale the mountain. I forgot what the word was, yeah. but the mountain itself was alive, and it was. I sort of pictured sort of the same kind of. Uh, um, theme there or like feel for the artwork where it would be kind of just dark and the, the mountain doesn't want you to climb it or sort of like this force doesn't want to be brought back to its former self so that's cool yeah that's where i started but um i don't know why i got i kind of went away from that and ended up with um a sort of a city theme where oh, wow. you have you have a uh because, you know, around, you know, I, I live outside of Chicago and in the Midwest, we have a lot of larger cities that are sort of f- falling into decay. You know, and you heard it, you're, the word urban decay is said a lot. Yeah. Um, and, um, and there's also the word of restoration all the time, urban restoration. And they're always trying to um, bring you know, certain um, sectors of um, communities back by, you know, instilling different types of institutions or whatnot. So that's where my mind went. So sort of the same mechanics would probably be in play. I sort of pictured like a, uh, a tile laying game um, where you start off with maybe a modular board. I went to hexes right away, which I've never really designed a game with hexes, but that's where my mind went. Where You'd sort of build a modular board of hexes that um, resemble some sort of um, slums. That, first of all, hexes are and, and modern day city building. I don't think I've ever seen that. So that's pretty that's pretty cool. Like you always see hexes with like a fantasy theme or something, you know. Yeah, yeah, space. yeah or space theme. Like always, yeah. space always seems to go that route too. But yeah, I, I for me, what it was is I wanted. I don't know the name of the game. I haven't obviously I haven't played it yet. The one where you're, um, it's a tile laying game where the piece is kind of like Tetris pieces, and you're and you 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 build them out, and then you you want to build another layer above it, but they you can't go beyond the borders of the oh, first yeah. layer you built. I forgot the name of the game, but yeah, I don't know. I sort of um, thought of that, and I wanted to. So maybe the slums would have some sort of criteria or, you know, some sort of problem that they're that's in that particular area, whether maybe it's poverty or maybe drug problems or violence or crime or whatnot. So you'd have like maybe a drafting mechanism with these tiles and players would take turns um, 
placing these tiles overlaying on top of the the, the starting tiles somehow and sort of replacing um, these these bad areas by trying to trying to trying to bring them up by maybe putting parks in or police stations or community centers or you know different things or uh, factories that could create jobs you're sort of trying to find the best spot to place them some some sort of kind of a puzzle type game so I got to there we'll see what else I got I saw down. on your uh, your image that you, you you shared online and it showed how the the hexes would overlap and it's neat because like <laughs> Like they have thirds, like a third of a hex. Yes, yes. So that that's hexes I, I are really flexible. Think, they're they're really. Yeah, cool. I was trying to think. How do you describe that? You know, <laughs> on, on a podcast. But yeah, the hexes in my mind, I pictured. Yes, yeah, so you'd break them up into thirds, so that uh, two edges would be you know one section, and then two edges to another section, and and so forth. And then you would lay your tiles. The new tiles would overlay, so they would cover up a portion of three different hexes, if that makes sense. Yeah. So the center piece of where three meet is the is where the center of the one on top of the new yeah. of the new tile would and would go. And and that guy, my I sort of visualized uh, there being some sort of you know icons or whatnot on the lower tiles, and then you would have icons from the new tiles, and you would sort of try to match those up and uh, build up the board somehow and score points. Probably maybe there'd be a scoring tracker of some sort. Let me see what else I got written down here. Uh, yeah, tiles are drafted and placed. Uh, what else? New tiles must uh, cover up old tiles by uh, matching icons. So yeah, you'd want to like you'd probably optimize by putting uh you know some sort of factory or something in a place where they're in a great need for work or jobs or something like that. So there'd be a way of scoring points that way. So cool. that's really about as far as I got with the word in saturation and that's about all I got. Yeah, that's good. That's that's cool. It's um I saw yours is a little more visual. I haven't gotten visual in my notes. Mine are just straight like text for the past couple weeks. Uh, I usually do get pretty visual drawing, you know, images and stuff like that, but I just I haven't and I, I need to get back to that. I, I get so much more done. Like I have tons of notebooks. I have I don't know how many notebooks I have, like probably 40, maybe 50 notebooks full of notes for games and wow. stuff. Most of it not being used, but um, you can refer it's back just, to it. And all. Yeah, you refer back to like, whoa, I forgot all about that design. Or, you know, you can get some inspiration from your own from yourself. But most of it's a lot of drawings. You know, I do just a lot of not necessarily illustrations for the game, like setting theme, but it's always like graphs or charts or the tiles or how the cards would lay out or how you set up the game and stuff like that. Cause to me to write that all out would just take to- so much longer. It's, I hate writing rules too. So yeah. oh, <laughs> same that's... sort of thing, you know, it's like, how do you write this? I visual, I can visualize it, but how do I put that in the words? You know, uh, I'm, I'm in a rut of writing rules for all different kinds of games right now. It's the worst, <laughs> but with, uh, I can't draw to save my life. Like I sat down the other day and tried to draw something and it was just so bad. I crumpled up threw it in the trash and went to bed, but I get the same, I get a kind of a design rush in Photoshop. Like I'll just start laying something out and the game will start to come together. I'm not even there yet, but I feel like that's part of my design process is just to start laying out the the cards or whatever. And it, it really does help me get further in actually designing. Yeah, because it becomes a spatial thing, and then you sort yeah. of see it from a different angle. You know, if you just if it's all if it's all text, you know, you know what it means. You can, but I don't know how many notes I have of, that I'll go back to, and I'll be like, I have no idea what I'm talking about here because, <laughs> you know, I I just don't know what it is. I'm like, what type of game is this? And I'll read through it and be like, but at the moment when I'm writing it, I'm like, oh yeah, this is great, blah blah blah, because my mind's going a million miles yeah. per second, and I'm writing everything down in like shorthand or something, and then I come back to it, and it's like some foreign alien language, and I don't know what I you know what it is, so. So yeah, I just drawing pictures helps. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm with you on that. I'm trying to summarize these episodes into just like a paragraph of of my notes, so I when I go to refer back to them, I can one I know what they are, and two I can actually read them because they're just sloppy as ever. So <laughs> struggling there. Awesome. Well, this was a lot of fun. I'm glad we actually got to talk for the first time, and we're making yeah, a game together, which is on. really cool. Um, so tell everybody how they can uh, get in touch with you. Um, probably the easiest way is on uh, Twitter, uh, Gray Gnome. Um, also, I have the website's uh, graygnome.com, and you can find me on Facebook as well. Just look up Gray, uh, Gray Gnome Games. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on. It was, it was good chatting. Thanks for having me. It was fun.